Hey guys, welcome back to another Tumblr tutorial. Today I decided to throw together a last minute St. Patrick's Day Tumblr. I wasn't planning on doing one and I didn't realize we were only a week out from St. Patty's Day. So sorry this is really late in the game, but I figured I'd just do one. So we're gonna start out with a 30 ounce skinny and some UV resin. This is totally optional. You can use regular resin if you want to up to you I was just trying to get it together quickly so I'm taking about 15 mls of the UV resin to about 5 mls of shamrock from peachy olive glitters I'm gonna mix that together until I get a smooth consistency we want it a little bit runny but not too much we don't want it clumpy I'd rather have it more runny than clumpy um, and you can just add to the little pot there as needed if you need to thin that out just want it to go on smooth without looking streaky on your tumbler so we're going to I would say measure off just about half of the tumbler and tape it off spray paint that base with a lime green and then we're gonna apply the glitter wet to this tumbler once we've got that applied and before we're curing it with the UV light we want to make sure that we're removing the tape at the bottom of the tumbler if you're curing that UV resin with the tape on, it's going to adhere to that transfer tape or painter's tape, whatever you're using to tape that off, uh, and it's going to rip up the glitter. So go ahead and remove that before curing, and then I'm going to cut out some stencils. This is the Oracle stencil vinyl. I'll link it in the description box for you guys. I'm laying these stencils down very sparingly, keeping in mind that in addition to outlining the peekaboo portion of this we're also going to lay down vinyl accents and I don't want to overwhelm the design there's a lot going on with the patterns with the power wash that you'll see here and it's just I think it can easily be overwhelming and I just don't want to do too much and not be able to come back from that so less is more here if that's your preference to add more you're welcome to do so I just kind of went with this design I had a little bit of an idea in my mind but also like I said I didn't want to overwhelm it and not be able to come back so we're gonna lay down both the shamrocks and the leopard spots and then once that's all in place where I want it I'm going to take some transfer tape you guys can use painters tape whatever you want to use at the bottom to tape off the bottom portion so you don't get any spray paint or power wash in that bottom section and then we're gonna go ahead and head outside to do our power wash design I don't think I've done power wash on this channel before, so I just want to give you guys a rundown if you've not done this or if you're not familiar with this method. So the more power wash or power washes like Dawn, I believe it's Dawn dish soap in the spray bottle, um, the more power wash you put on your tumbler, the more it's going to cover the glitter, resulting in less spray paint adhering to the cup because it's going to stick to that power wash and get washed off. The less power wash that you use, it's going to leave more space on that tumbler for the paint to adhere to. And then when you wash it off, there's gonna be more glitter exposed. So depending on the look that you're going for, you can do one way or the other. You can meet in the middle and, you know, have a medium amount covered. It's all personal preference. So I'm gonna take my tumbler and hold it about two feet from me spray that power wash on and then spray the paint over top of that and this is a very fast process so you want to make sure that you've got your water nearby that you're immediately washing it off and rinsing it the cup you know making sure there's no soap left on it we don't want any residue left over if that paint starts to dry after those bubbles go away it's going to leave this weird like milky looking film over the sections that you want the glitter to show through so um, once we've got that removed i'm going to go inside and immediately go to my workstation taking a wet paper towel or a cloth or whatever you want I use water just to pat the tumbler dry so it's not sticking and then once it's dry we're going to take some um, paper towel with some rubbing alcohol 70% 90% whatever you want to use and I'm going to very 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 lightly rub over my tumbler just in case there's any like 
fogginess over the sections that the glitter is supposed to be showing through. Um, I want to make sure that that is wiped away so it doesn't look filmy or foggy. Um, it's very easy to overdo and cause your paint to muddle up and spread and then you've got gaps of paint that are missing and you're gonna have to move remove the whole thing redo it because it just turns into a mess so like I said very quick process make sure you're not rubbing too hard when you're trying to remove any of that like overcast spray paint um, and then once you've got that done we're gonna go ahead and remove the stencils and move into applying the vinyl offset as well as the vinyl decals I guess I would say there's an offset and then there's just a regular um, like vinyl that I'm laying down. So we're going to go ahead and do that and get moving on this tumbler. This next step is all pretty self-explanatory. I'm just gonna lay down some full vinyl decals as well as the offsets. I do not have a coat of epoxy over top of this paint. I would recommend if you're using a metallic that's non-textured or holographic or something of that sort that you can really see any bumps underneath, I would definitely recommend using a coat of epoxy over the um, power wash section. I don't know why I could not remember that. Um, before you're going in with these decals, because I'm using textured and like a holographic, it you couldn't see any of the texture underneath it. Um, and so I just went in with the vinyl right over top of the power wash. I didn't do the coat of epoxy. Um, the other thing I would recommend normally when you're doing a peekaboo method, you can see exactly, you know, match up, play that matching game to match the stencil to the decal. With this one, because we're doing power wash, it is not very clear what stencil goes with <laughs> what vinyl offset once you've got that stencil removed. So I would recommend doing these one by one and not pulling all of your stencils at one time and laying down all of your vinyl at one time. It's very easy to lose track of what stencil goes with what vinyl offset so keep that in mind when you're laying these down and I'm gonna let this run through and show you guys how I laid all of the vinyl work down and I will come back in the next section I'm back. <laughs> so we're gonna go in with this vinyl from Banff Custom Creations. You guys will notice that the bottom of this tumbler is glittered and I am a total idiot. I was thinking that this plaid vinyl was semi-transparent and that the white sections were gonna show glitter through. I don't know what I was thinking, but it was not. So this was glittered for absolutely no reason because the vinyl that I'm using is opaque. So don't be like me. Um, so we're just gonna cover up that glitter that we did, which is why I didn't show it in the beginning. So I'm gonna use the hinge method to apply this vinyl and I'm going to just line it directly up to the green glitter and power wash section that we've got going on here. We're gonna cut that once it gets to the seams that meet in the middle there, score it, and then cut off the excess. And then once that is all laid down, I'm gonna pop any air bubbles that may have snuck under that vinyl when I was laying it down. I am planning on adding some gold foil accents to the bottom of this cup, so I didn't bring this vinyl all the way to the bottom. I left just a little bit of room for me to be able to add that foil accent to the bottom. 
So we are going to clean up the rim, make sure there is no spray paint along the top rim of that tumbler so it doesn't cause us any issues once we go to lay down the epoxy. We're gonna do some cleanup and then once everything is all cleaned up, I'm gonna tape off the bottom of that plaid vinyl to make sure that none of the gold flake gets stuck into the vinyl portion of the tumbler. And I'm going to use Aline's Tacket to apply that foil. I did not spray paint or base paint that bottom of that tumbler because the gold flakes are so opaque, it didn't matter. It wasn't gonna show through anyways. And it was such a small portion that I just didn't think that it needed it. So I'm going to apply that and hit it with my heat gun until it is completely clear. If it's milky, that means that the glue is not dry. It needs a little bit more time to dry. It will always be sticky, but if it's not dry, it's going to just smear around and your foil is not going to stick to it. So I'm going to break up these foils. You could use a foil sheet. You could use glitter, whatever you want to use in this bottom section of the tumbler is up to you. And I'm going to do this twice. So I didn't get completely full coverage the first time. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that foil, rub off any excess, and then reapply that tacket glue, hit it with the heat gun again, and then reapply the foils. And we're gonna make sure to burnish them down until it's completely smooth on the tumbler. And we don't want any pokey bits because foil is so sharp under epoxy. If you've ever put epoxy over it and it's dried and you've had like a pokey bit of foil, you'll know it is like a razor blade. So we want to make sure that it is super flat. There's no little pieces or bumps or anything sticking up on the foil section. Before I remove my tape, I'm going to take some polycrylic and put it just on that gold flake section. I want to make sure that once this is laid down, it's not going to move. It's not going to travel up into the vinyl or into the glitter. I want this to be a very clean look and making sure that we're putting polycrylic on there is going to prevent any of that from traveling across the tumbler where we don't want it. So we're gonna brush off the excess, put the polycrylic on, and once it's still wet, we're going to remove the tape from the vinyl section. Once the polycrylic is clear, you'll see how it's milky here. Once that's clear, that means it's completely dry. You can also do just a finger test and touch it. If it's sticky, obviously it's not dry. Um, and then at that point, you can put your epoxy over the tumbler. But if it's still milky, make sure you're not putting the epoxy on it because that milkiness will stay even after the epoxy is cured and it's gonna look like it's foggy. So I'm just going back in and I wanted to add a few little accents of the gold textured vinyl. These are just little shamrocks. They're an exact dupe of the bigger shamrocks that we've got. I cut them out at 0.25 inches, so they're teeny tiny. And again, as I mentioned in a tutorial or two ago, I don't know how polycrylic acts over spray paint and so I didn't want to chance it and ruin all of the work that I had done so I'm just gonna go over this with some UV epoxy um, because I don't want my vinyl to lift I'm just gonna use this instead of a fast setting or a regular setting epoxy because I don't want to give it time to seep under that vinyl and lift up and cause the vinyl to become lifted <laughs> obviously for one but also it's gonna cause a lot of rework. I'm gonna have to sand it down or put several other coats of epoxy over it to cover up that lifting. So I'm just gonna be proactive and I'm gonna apply this UV resin to make sure all of that vinyl is adhered to the tumbler before we go in with an epoxy that's gonna take longer to cure. So we're gonna torch that and cure it for, I would say probably about five minutes or so. And then I'm gonna go in with my regular setting epoxy and some Athena from Peachy Olive Glitters. I am using a teeny tiny bit. Like I said in the beginning, this is a lot of stuff going on with this tumbler. We don't wanna overwhelm it. And so I wanted to add more glitter, especially because I was heartbroken about that white glitter at the bottom not showing through. So I needed to go back in and add some extra glitter. So we're gonna apply just Flint Sisters regular setting epoxy to the entire cup. 
And then in addition to that, I'm gonna add a little bit of glitter to a second little pot of um, epoxy. And I'm going to add that just into the power wash sections. I made sure not to get that glitter on the inside of the shamrock peekaboo. I wanted that to be just solely green glitter. Um, and so I added it to the power wash section and to any of the leopard spots or um, the shamrocks that were not peekaboo. So we're going to add that and torch it. Now I did make a mistake and I put too much epoxy on this tumbler or I put too much of the glitter additive, I guess, on the tumbler. Um, and while it was spinning overnight, it kind of migrated down into the plaid section. So there's like two little specks of glitter that you'll see there. So just keep that in mind. If you overdo it, it's obviously going to move. Or if you torch it too much, it's going to kind of migrate across the tumbler. Um, so we don't want to do that. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and go in with our vinyl striping next. I really loved the rainbow edition that I did on the St. Patty's Day tumbler from last year. And you guys loved that as well. So I decided to incorporate that into this one this year. So we're going to use just that as a base, the rainbow holographic striping as a base, and then keeping with the same textures that we've been using on the top portion of the tumbler. We're going to use textured gold, textured gold <laughs> metallic. I can't talk um, for the second stripe. So we're going to lay that down, making sure that the seams of the stripes are matching up with the seam of the plaid. So it's not all over the tumbler and coat that with polycrylic. And then the last step we're going to do is add some it's epoxy additive. I don't know what it's called. I tried to find it on the Mr. Nola's website and I couldn't, but it's like ultra, ultra fine glitter. Just add a tiny bit to your last coat of epoxy or second to last coat of epoxy before you add it to the tumbler. And it gave a perfect sheen to that plaid vinyl at the bottom that I wanted to add a little bit more glitter to. And once I let that spin overnight, that was fully cured and this tumbler was completely finished and I love it. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already. Hit that bell button for notifications on future tutorials and I will see you guys next weekend.